You are watching Rachel Meets, a weekly television show in Longford promoting current affairs and events in Longford and also up and coming musicians. On this week's show I am joined by organisers of the Ashling Festival, Claire Masco and Marie Fennessy. Also the director of this week's uh, Backstage Theatre Group production play The Accused. I am joined by director Declan Donoghue. But first up they've travelled all the way down from Dublin to be with us today, The New 52. Hi. Woo! How are you? How Hello. Are you? Cheers. Thanks a million for coming down. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it just, just got here. Just got yeah. here. Um, so the album um, Let Me Sleep came out almost a month ago. Yeah. How's everything been going? It's been great. Yeah, it's been very busy. We've been kind of up and down the country a lot, doing, doing a lot of radio and a couple of gigs. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's been, yeah, it's been really good, yeah. Because you had two launches. One was in the Workman's and one was in the Roisin Dove. That must have been pretty crazy. Yeah, the Workman's was insane. Yeah, that was yeah, a great gig. Uh, and then um, Russian Dove was great as well. We had these two are in a band called Submotion who played with us as well. So they were they did about two hours overall. Yeah, it's pretty. That's a pretty long gig. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot of rock. <laughs> a lot of rock. <laughs> that's good though. It's <laughs> good that it shows real character of rock and roll that mm. you can keep it going with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> best thing. I'm yeah. not finished. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, um, because you were on your, you were solo up until six months ago before you all started touring together. Yeah, I um, I had two albums out before under my own name, and I was making this album. In it was supposed to be a solo album, but our producer suggested um, it might work out better to call the band name because it sounded so much like a band. Yeah. Um, so then I brought the guys in. I've known them all for for years, and uh, yeah. We've been together ever since. Yeah. It sounds like a band because you played every instrument on the album yourself, didn't you? Pretty much. Uh, the, our producer, Boo, he did some, some backing vocals. And then our engineer, Chris, he did some keyboards and uh, percussion. And we have a guy called Gustav from Denmark who, uh, he's a friend of the producer's Boo. And you just send him songs and say, I want any instrument. And he'll just he'll do it for you. He's amazing. Cool. So we were like, we want pedal steel here violin here, saxophone here, whatever, and then That's simple. like two hours later you get all the files back and it's amazing. Modern mm. technology, hey, we yeah. don't need band members, we've got the internet. Yeah, just the internet <laughs> and yeah. amazing <laughs> musicians from yeah. Denmark. <laughs> That's all you need. Um, because as well, you are only 21 and yes, you've had yeah. three albums out already. Yeah. And your debut album came out when you were 15. It did, yeah. So when all the rest of us were like getting up to mischief and you know, dealing with puberty, you were out being a superstar already. <laughs> still doing it. Yes, we're still doing it. You're just dealing with a true music. Yeah. How did it yeah, feel? Just, uh, yeah, like, uh, <laughs> just, yeah, whatever. That's really, you'd, it just happens. You're just, you're just doing it, really. Just you're just, it. just yeah. I am, um, I grew up, my dad is um, a drama teacher and he was involved in a Beatles play with a, with a uh, Beatles tribute band. So I kind of, from about eight onwards, I knew all these musicians who were releasing albums themselves. And you started playing music at themselves. age eight, was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I started guitar at eight. And uh, so it always seemed very achievable to just do your it's own thing and make it, make an album. And you kind of figure ah, out how yeah. to do it cheaply. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's, that's why. Ah, um, yeah, every 15 year old just yeah. gets told by Hot Press that they're the best, <laughs> they do, what was it, the best young songwriter in Ireland at the minute? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the minute. Ah, yeah. <laughs> of, I think of the <laughs> year. Of the year. Of the minute. Yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> now. The one of the country's most promising songwriters. That was Jackie Hayden. Solo yeah. artist of the year 2010. Yeah. All, all the songs I was writing at then weren't that very good, so, like, well done there. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, well done. Yeah. I think I was writing one about school or something. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. I probably heard them. Yeah. We were we were in school together, us three, so I we kinda heard all our like early awkward <laughs> songs and it's pretty fun. Yeah. It's been a, it's been a fun time. 
So how does it feel at age 15 to have the biggest music magazine in the country say the stuff about you? It was cool. I remember I used to, because Jackie Hayden was really supportive of us and he'd always try and throw a mention in to the magazine whenever he could. Um, so I would always buy Hot Press the day it came out uh, in the shop beside my school in the morning and I'd bring it in uh, before class and just sort of leave the page open where my name is. Like, hey, that's you, Dara. That's you. <laughs> just sneaky. <laughs> just, yeah, it didn't work. No, didn't I was work. even going to say, did it make you like the most popular boy ever? Or no, did no. people give a shit? No, like, yeah, they just, you know, there was like my three friends would be like, hey, that's cool. Mm. And then the other 85 people in the year would be like, <laughs> yeah, sure. Six annoying. years on, is it, has it improved? <laughs> Not really, no. I've still got three friends. <laughs> <laughs> but it must be great now that you are you have the band to tour with, you're not, um, not on doing it all on your own. Yeah, it's it's very nice. These guys are great as well. Um, <laughs> I, I, I get to drive you everywhere now. Yeah, so. Mikey's our, he's, he plays bass uh, and, he, and he's our chauffeur. Yeah. So. Is that why you got a band so you'd have a driver? Yeah, oh, yeah I think yeah. so. I think, so. <laughs> I think that's why you picked me as well as in the band. Well, you didn't, yeah, you didn't no, drive no, at the time. <laughs> yeah. So don't worry. Okay, fine. It was, it was basically... They don't know that, though. <laughs> yeah, we should make up the story. Yeah. It's all I down to merit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's brilliant having the band and they're amazing musicians, the three of them, so it's been... Oh. It's been, uh -huh. It's been just, yeah, and all the rehearsals Aww. have been incredible. Love. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it difficult for you guys to juggle the two bands, or has it just been...? Um, not really, because Dara's actually really organised. So uh, we know, like, three or four months in advance what we're doing the whole time. So uh, we can... And then, like, when we're, or, we're not really organised in the other band, though, so... <laughs> not, not, yet. Not, not as organised, so... We can just float around Dara. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So I like to float around Dara. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you manage everything yourself, Dara, or do you have a manager or me a team? Me and um, me and my dad. That's the management team. Seems me. like a pretty solid team to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we do all right. You guys do well. Yeah. yeah you know. He, uh, because I started so young, he kind of he did a, he helped a lot when I was on the first album and second album because I was busy doing homework and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so he, would help, he would help with, with the, all the sending all the emails and, and getting it into the right hands and that sort of thing. And uh, since, since I've left school, I've kind of taken over a bit more yeah. of the management duties. But uh, yeah, he's still, he's still a big part of it, my dad. Were you gigging a lot for the first two albums? Um, more, more on the second album. The first album we did, I mean, we did a fair few gigs just around Dublin and... Uh, yeah, we didn't, didn't really travel much outside of them. The second album, we did a tour around Ireland. Um, and then this album, we're going even further to other places in Ireland. Even to Galway. Yeah, away. yeah to Galway. Go wow. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we're, in, we're going to the UK as well. In Excellent. The next month as well yeah. so. Brilliant. We're just, the plan is just we'll get a new country every album, maybe. <laughs> Where do you want to go next? Brazil. Okay. Brazil. Um, Ireland, the UK, Brazil. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah. Sounds like a logical progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sounds right. Very similar it's markets. a logical yeah. step from the UK. Yeah. Brazil. 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 So are you all in around the same age, 21? Mm, 22. I'm 23. 22. Yeah, like I'm yeah. the old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm the baby. I always feel like the dad in the car, though. Like, you guys are always messing. I'm just like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> are we there yet? Are we there yeah. yet? Stop talking. <laughs> Did exactly you skip that. the whole college thing then, or...? Yeah, I, le I left school early, I left in fifth year, so... Wow. Yeah, college is never my thing either, so I tried it, but wasn't really. These two are no. academics. I have a degree in philosophy, so. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> John has an important degree, though. I, yeah, I finished a neuroscience, I finished a neuroscience degree, <laughs> and then I'm in a master's this year, so. Wow. <laughs> so, we've got and some rock. My, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So he got gets drums real, and neuroscience is very emotional. He gets real yeah, frustrated. Yeah, you take it all so. out. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> wow. So you're, uh, you're obviously pretty sure of this music thing. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing it for years now. Ah, so. uh, yeah. Well, like, obviously things have been going so well. It's logical to keep going and keep plugging at it. Uh, it's just it's the best job in the world for me. Yeah. Because even my hobbies are really listening to music, playing music for fun. So... Might as well make a career out of it. My whole day is music, so I may yeah. as well do it as a job as well. 
Do play, you, you know, we'd play the gigs and then we'd get in the car and then we'd listen to our Spotify playlist. Yeah. And I go home and then I listen to music that we've more music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's, 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 that's your day. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. <laughs> because I read somewhere one of your great influences is Robbie Williams. Oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Love him. I love him too. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> I, my dad told me when I was uh, two, his first single came out. Not Angels. So it was before I was I was before he became huge. I was like the single where people thought he was a joke, and I used to sing that in Tesco. I just hopped on the bandwagon. You were just Angels, was yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's great. I love Robin. He's yeah. a great lyricist. He's a great performer. Funny. Actually, I've, yeah. I've I've yet to see him perform, but he's one of those. Oh, I keep missing him. People that I really really want to Me see. Me and my sister went to see him in the Aviva a few years ago, and he's great. He came down. He's zip lined down from the top of the. <laughs> the stadium to the stage. That's so cool. Yeah. That yeah. Is would wild. that be yeah. a life goal to zip line down for the Aviva? No, I'd be terrified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we do that? Can we do that if you we ever... Yeah, yeah. yeah, I want to do that. And you could be playing like in the middle and they could yeah. like make yeah. the yeah. Wee! Yeah, I'd be terrified. <laughs> no, I want to do that. It's cool. It's cool to watch. Yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. He is amazing. And take that as well. Big fan, take that. What would you like if they got back together? I heard, they, I heard there's a rumour they are. Yeah, I heard that too. Like next year. Yeah. yeah. I'd be, I'd be all for that. Super. Because I missed that tour, which is really annoying. The, <laughs> the Robbie, the last Robbie reunion. Oh, yeah. I heard that was cool. <laughs> yeah, the robot on stage. Oh, cool. There were songs where, like, they were in the palm of the robot's hand and stuff. So you yeah. definitely need to get so zip lines and robots. Lines How did I not hear about this? <laughs> <laughs> they had another tour where they had a circus on stage. Cool. It's crazy. Wow. I did see Take That last year, though, with the, with the three of them. That was cool. Have you any other major influences? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, just take that. Just, just Robbie. Okay, you know. anyway, you're the main dream for this. I had to bring it up because it's so rare people would admit something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you hear the other influences. <laughs> oh, please, <laughs> Robbie. <laughs> um, well, Foo Fighters are a huge one for all of us. Yeah. Now he's trying to be cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, trying yeah. The, coo the cool rock bands now. <laughs> like, uh, the, the Beatles was a big one, and because my dad. Yeah. Started, and that was sort of what started the love affair at music was seeing this Beatles tribute band. So the Beatles is probably the first big one. Um, I can name some other uncool ones though. Name the uncool ones. I was a huge Boyzone fan. Excellent. I, I, I mean, I don't listen to them as much anymore, but I just, it, it'll always be a, a part of me. <laughs> <laughs> what about you guys? Do you have any embarrassing ones? Mm. Embarrassing. I know you're a big Taylor you. Swift fan, the, the yeah, two of you. Yeah. But that's not embarrassing. She's, She's good. She's yeah. good. <laughs> Ooh, used um, to do a Taylor Swift cover. I've heard a couple of rock bands doing Taylor Swift covers, and they're mint. They're we, really we good. Actually, uh, <laughs> we actually we did a Lady Gaga cover All right. uh, years ago, and it actually went really well. It's probably the best bad thing we've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was great. The bad romance cover. Yeah. Her new single's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I, liked the, I liked the new Lady Gaga song. Whatever. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Well, mutually, though, we love Prince. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> back to the cool yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, back yeah. to the... Yeah, so <laughs> Prince. There's one thing we agree on, it's Prince. Purple it's like, it, yeah, it was the first uh, uh, drive that we did to a show, uh, and then we, it was just the day when Prince died, and we're like, we're all bummed oh, out about no. it. Yeah. And we're like, oh, man, okay, we, let's put on Purple Rain. And we listened to it, like, three times in that, like, drive. <laughs> and it, was, it was very emotional oh, for us, drive. yeah. It was very, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We were, no, it was because yeah. it was like the sun was setting. And we yeah. were going under this huge bridge. Yeah, yeah. And it was such a the, like, moment. big penultimate. <laughs> do -do, do -do. <laughs> oh, right. Oh. oh, yeah, no. Yeah, so Prince, Prince is a the Prince. Yeah. Yeah. Well, back to the new 52, Let Me Sleep. Um, the single from it is Who is Sarah? No, I was going to ask you who oh. is Sarah. Song for Sarah. <laughs> Sarah. Who is Sarah? Is there a Sarah? There is a Sarah, yeah. Uh, it's, this is always really awkward. Yeah. <laughs> She's real. <laughs> it's a really Hi, Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's someone I used to go out with, and now I don't. It's more of a... Well, it's more, yeah. It's, it's metaphorical Sarah. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah. I guess I can yeah. understand yeah. that, where everybody ha has had a Sarah at, at some point in their life, really. Yeah. Uh, hey, what are you laughing at? Felina <laughs> had a... It's, it's a very specific that's... name. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Felina had a song, Sarah, yeah. so yeah. It, it could just I, be a... Oh, well, it's it's not. I'm not talking well, specifically. I meant like everyone. The has, had, a, yeah, has, has had, had like yeah, uh, yeah. you know, oh, whatever. Yeah, who, who, yeah. who cares? The, um, <laughs> the day the video came out, it was the day the junior cert results 
But the day before the junior results came How out. young are you guys? Oh my god. No, 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 Shared it and said, This is for my granddaughter Sarah, who has her junior fit results. Oh, yeah. it's like, wow, that's amazing. Wow. That is nice. I listen to the song though, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty sad song. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was cool. So, I, I think the, the idea behind it was to hopefully it, it'll relate to other people in, in their lives and not just be about me, yeah. my silly life, cool. about everyone's silly life. Yeah, yeah. it's about that's love it. lost for. Anyone, really. It's not just about someone called Sarah. That's beautiful, Mikey. Wow. Well, it's, it's true. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. Put that yeah. on the poster. Yeah, sure. That would be like the, the title of the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> about love mm, lost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what, when, or what, what's the next single, or when is it out? Uh, or it looks it like it'll be Good Intentions. That's not official yet, but I probably, it'll probably be Good Intentions, and that'll be out next year, early next year. Okay. I think February or March. So you're just going to be gigging up until then? Or yes, yes. We've, we have a few gigs in November. We're going to the UK, we're doing London and Glasgow. Uh, and then we're playing a gig in Waterford on the 11th of November. That's our last Irish gig for the year, I think. Then December, we're going to be doing a little bit of recording and getting the, the new single prepped. Cool. We're going to go in and do some B-sides, I think. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And we'll get to be on it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah. Because, yeah, I didn't have the band for the album, so it's yeah. nice to actually have the new 52 on, on record now. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's going to be fun. Excellent. Be so, uh, Waterford is your n only Irish date left? Yeah. Until uh, we'll have. The yeah, I know for next year. year but yeah. So, if anybody does want to check you out, Facebook, Twitter, yeah, yeah, Instagram, the all, music. all of them. Yeah. Uh, all of them. Our Snapchat. Website. Where all the good stuff is. We don't have Snapchat. We should get a Snapchat, actually. Snapchat. Yeah, Snapchat. I think, I think uh, we need to get that. Like, we have Snapchats, but I don't think we want to put our personal well, I, Snapchat. I don't anymore. I don't reuse really mine too much. But yeah. I know you saw, I, I saw on your Facebook your friends with Heroes in Hiding. They have yeah. a Snapchat, and they told me that's where the good stuff is, that the management yeah. can't get their hands <laughs> on. Fun fact, actually. <laughs> Heroes in Hiding do, yeah. 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 We're good friends with Heroes in Hiding. Um, yeah, I saw that on your Facebook. On the, uh, on the Late Late Show, they used Sean's drunk kit. Yeah, yeah. I saw it. So that was Sean's yeah. lovely blue. So your, yeah. your drum kit has it's been on the telly. It's yeah. been, on, been on the telly. His yeah, I haven't put my kit yeah. 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 Oh, you have been on the telly. What's <laughs> this? <laughs> Cable <laughs> car is on now, now, guys. This is the late, late show. <laughs> 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 Look, thanks very much for coming down and joining me. Thanks um, you're going to sing, the sh sing us out tonight with a song. What's it called? Uh, turning. Turning. Brilliant. Thanks, Mel. Stay tuned for the new 52's turning, but up next I will be chatting to Declan Donoghue, the director of The Accused, which is starting in the Backstage Theatre tomorrow. Up right now, though, a gig guide and events guide for everything that's happening in Longford over the next few days.
as you saw there, loads of great stuff coming up in Longford over the next few days, one of which is the Ashing Festival starting on Sunday, and I will be talking to the organisers a little later on. But first up, it's kicking off tomorrow night in the Backstage Theatre, and I am joined by Declan Donoghue, barber by day but director by night, the director of The Accused. How are uh, you? Good, Rachel. Thanks for having us on. Are you all set for tomorrow? Uh, as, as ready as need be. All we need now is the audience, I think. <laughs> we're, we're getting on happy enough with it now at present. So it's been, been a, a, a long run getting to this stage, but the hard work has been put in by the cast and crew, and I think we're, we're ready to give Longford a, a play with a difference. Yes, so tell us about The Accused, because many people probably haven't heard of it, but it's quite interesting. Yeah, The Accused, it's a play by Geoffrey Archer, or Lord Archer as he's known to his friends now, who would have had lots of experience in courtrooms over his years, and it's a courtroom drama. So in it, the main, the title character, the accused, is Dr. Patrick Sherwood, who is accused of murdering his wife. So one by one, you have the various witnesses come in, giving their testimony under cross-examination by the two QCs. But the twist comes with the, with the verdict. The audience are the jury on the night, and the cast have to have rehearsed two separate endings, depending on whether he's found guilty or not guilty by the audience. Wow. So it's, so it's a, a, bit, a bit of pressure on the cast, not knowing which ending yes. they're going to perform until the very last moment. But it brings that excitement as well, like the cast will probably be on their toes that little bit more. And oh, ab for absolutely, and, and during rehearsals, and I'm sure it will happen over Thursday, Friday and Saturday night when it's on, there's been great banter between the two actors playing the QCs. You've Roy Davies, uh, who is playing the Crown Prosecution QC, and your Phil Cox, who's playing the defence QC. So they're getting banter out of who's going to win it okay. on, on each night. So in rehearsals, they've been, they've been fighting over it. And I'd say once we hit the stage tomorrow night, it's really going to, yeah. to, to ramp the, the levels because of will, crack. Because they, they'll be in competition with each other. Absolutely throughout. good, good friendly banter. That's brilliant. As, as I've been saying to people in the run up to it, it all depends on the audience. Which side has put forward the better case, which side do they believe more or do they just want to, to believe the accused in his testimony or is there a key witness that gives something that they latch on to? And it could go the one verdict all three nights. Yes. Or it could be split over the three nights. I've been saying to people, and this is not to influence the audience, it would be great if it went one way Thursday night one way Friday night, and the Saturday was the deciding night yes. between the two boys. It would, yeah, yeah, two out of three would yeah. be fab. And in other productions, how has it gone? Have, have, is there like a trend, or is it always different? Uh, I do not know. I haven't seen a production of it done myself before, so I haven't done much digging around on other productions to see how it went. And I suppose if I did that, it might lean my direction one way or another. If I searched and saw that in the last production, four out of five nights was guilty, I might steer it le that way. lean over just to steer it that way or to steer it the other way. Yeah. You know, so, so I've avoided that myself, so I, I really don't know. And even there was a few group members that went to see another production of this a few years ago, and that's where, where I became aware of it. Okay. And they won't tell me how it went the night they went to it. Oh, brilliant. You know, for, for fear of, I think, influencing how I how I push it with the, with the cast. Because I was going to ask, because you haven't seen it before, what was the decider in wanting to put it on? Well, I said a few group members went and saw it and brought back a copy of the script. And earlier on in the year, I was looking at, at what play to direct. The group had decided that we weren't going to do our usual one-act plays, which usually happen at this time of year, that we're going to do a full-length production. So I was reading scripts to get an idea of what I might put myself in for directing. And as I was reading this, it was a real page turner because every witness that comes in brings more evidence. You could be thinking for one moment that he's innocent and then they'll bring a piece of evidence that say, no, that has to be him guilty. And then the next so witness will bring something else in and something else and it kept turning. So it was a real, real page turner and having the twist at the end and that little gimmick as such of getting the audience involved and having them part of the play 
what was a real selling point for me and I really enjoyed reading it so hopefully the audience will enjoy I think the so because even from sitting through readings of it myself I'm actually delighted I haven't seen it haven't seen any of the rehearsals only the original read throughs um, I think I only saw one read through with the whole cast yeah. so um, yeah I think it's going to be a good one well give it, given that you're doing the lights. If you don't, <laughs> if you don't see it, the audience yeah. won't see it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, yeah. we'll turn them on anyway. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, who actually? Are you, can you give it away, or who's playing who? Uh, the yeah, the cast. You won't give anything away. It's a wonderful cast. The cast of fifteen, okay. which is the largest cast I've dealt with in a play, and this is my first time directing a full-length play with the group. But we have, as they say, in no particular order, we've uh, the. His Lordship, Justice Cartwright, the judge, is being played by the president of Backstage Theatre Group, Patrick McLaughlin, who would be very well known around Longford, of course. The two QCs are Phil Cox and Roy Davis, and they'd have their legal assistants, who would be Raina Lynch and Amy Oates. So then ye, the accused himself, playing Dr. Sherwood, is Tom Lyons. Local Guilty. <laughs> lo 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 local journalist. I'm sure he, he, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be writing his own court report on it for next week. Then we have the jury bailiff who speaks directly to the audience from the start to let them know if anyone that's going to it doesn't know that the jury are part of it. So the jury bailiff has lots of interaction with the audience and that's Maureen Dunn. And you'll have the court usher, which is Mary McLaughlin. Then we will have the two guards one keeping control on the court and one keeping control on the prisoner. We have Seamus McManus and we have Anthony Heavey. And then you'd have the various witnesses coming in and giving their testimony. You'd have Frank Horn, uh, Jim Davey, Maggie McKenna, and Bernadette McGarvey, who's driving all the way from Carrick and Shannon for us. Oh. And then uh, someone's going to kill me. I think, <laughs> I, I think I only said 14 names. Uh, and someone very special we won't give and away. And someone very special, the, 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 the surprise guest. There's them 14 or 15 there. I don't know, I wasn't yeah. counting. Yeah. I was just thinking, that's a massive cast. And, sorry, the second witness in the box, the other Seamus, Seamus Morris. Okay. He'll, it's his first time with us. Wow. So we're, we're very lucky. We've got a very mixed cast, the likes of Pacho and Phil and Maureen, who've been very experienced. cornerstones of Baxter Theatre Group for years. And we've Seamus, who has never been involved with us before. Seamus McManus has been in two or three productions. This is only really in his second production with us. So we've got a good broad spectrum of ages and yeah, experience. experience through the group. I know Mags as well. She only did a one act, so this will be her full first full length yeah, as well. Yeah, Mags first time with the group is only back in May. For Perfidia. Doing Perfidia, which herself and Mary got to bring back for an encore performance in the Little Blue yeah, Room. Yeah, it's brilliant. And yeah. of course, that was directed by Pacho. So yes. it's good they have that relationship yeah. there already. And, it, and it's, it's great having the likes of Pacho and Phil in the can in the cast, who have that experience, and I can turn to them for guidance if I need, mm. and having people like that that will bring their character to rehearsals nearly already formed, so there's not as much pressure on them to do that during the rehearsals, so they can use rehearsals for getting the the movements or the pacing of the piece or the getting the right tone to it. So mm. it's great, and then it's lovely to be able to see someone like Seamus or Rihanna the lesser experienced people with the group coming in and watching them grow and develop as the weeks move on from never having read a script before in some cases to now being up on stage particularly the those who are playing witnesses they are bang center center of the stage with 200 people looking at them every night and to see how they'd grown and taken that it's wonderful yeah, to be part sad. of that so what would you say if you were to encourage people who maybe like that have never been involved before, have only done small things, if they wanted to join the backstage and were just a little bit apprehensive? Well, it's it, one of the, the beauties of Backstage Theatre Group, I found I've been involved in the group from 2002, something like that. And the group is so open to everybody. Like all the, for example, this is how we got Seamus in. All our auditions are open to anybody regardless of experience or being from Longford or outside Longford. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of Backstage Theatre Group, I think, is nobody is just an actor or just a director or just lighting. You can take on any role yeah. in, in a production. And it's, there's no pressure. It, it's not just about the people on the stage. Like, we'll have those 15 on stage, but 
behind the scenes, there'll be myself, there'll be Anya, who is production manager, stage manager. You'll have, I think, four different people on makeup. We had a beautiful set design. <laughs> that, that, that I ripped apart as soon as she turned and walked away. I haven't even seen my set design. <laughs> yeah, it's probably looking It's not your like set design <laughs> anymore. <laughs> you know, so we'd have set designer, we'd have someone on lighting, someone on sound, makeup. There's a huge crew behind every production. So even if you are apprehensive of being on stage, there's always something to do behind the scenes. And I think it's long before I was involved in the group, but I think it's part of where the name Backstage Theatre Group came from, okay. was to draw people to the unsung heroes who okay. were out the show can't happen like the part you're going to be performing like if you're not up in that box <laughs> doing the lights no one will see the show yeah that's you true know? so everybody is is catered for no matter what your experience i mean we have a monthly meeting every month and that's always open for anyone to come to i think shortly after we finish this production we'll already be going straight into our next one the casting for that will happen in the next few weeks but we always have our notes and contact details in the, the local notes in the Longford Leader. And we have our Facebook page, of course, Backstage Theatre Group. If you search for it on Facebook, you'll find us. And we're always open to anyone new coming in. Probably. Because the likes of Maggie and Raina, we had nights for new members back in May of last year and the year previous, where we just put on vignettes, if you would, just short five, six, ten minute long pieces to not have pressure on people. And that worked wonderfully. It was a lovely, gentle ease into it for them. But we're always open and screaming for new people. Because, I mean, it's wonderful to have your, your old favourites on stage. And we all love seeing X, Y or Z on stage. But you can go, yeah, but is there no one else? I want to see someone new. Yeah. And the audience, the audience love seeing the faces they, they know and recognise but they always like to see something new in it. Yeah, and that's, it's wonderful for us to have the option. Like when I was casting The Accused for 15 parts, I, I think 22 or 24 people auditioned. You know, and a lot of them were either new or very little experience within the group. So it was great to be able to have the opportunity to bring in new people and have new people come knowing that they could yeah. walk, walk into roles. And it's wonderful then for people like myself who want to be involved but no, they can't commit or maybe just don't feel ready to co go on stage, yeah. but they can still get involved in set design or costumes or I was just thrown into the lights for yeah. um, the last play. And um, yeah, it's just been and, it's and brilliant. And we dragged you out and on you the festival out circuit, circuit with it. Yeah. Yeah. We dragged you to North <laughs> Leitrim and South Roscommon. <laughs> and I survived <laughs> yeah. and I'm still involved. Yeah. Um, so if people, uh, if they do want to join the group, would it be best to just contact the Facebook page? The Facebook page is always there. We have the Facebook and Twitter if you search for Backstage Theatre Group. But we also have the group telephone, which the, the chairman, Declan Neville, is currently banging. And that number is off the top of my head. 0860860772. Okay, cool. I hope. Uh, and more pressing then, if people want to go see the, ac the Accused, it's on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And Saturday in Backstage Theatre at 8pm. The Theatre Box Office, again, will be backstage.ie or 043 888 And tickets are also available from Farrell Coy in Longford Town. Brilliant. I believe so far there's a nice push on tickets, so I think people will need to pick up the phone or get their walking shoes on up the canal line to the theatre to pick <laughs> yeah. them up at the box office. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for joining me. Well, thank you, Rachel. And I'll <laughs> see you in an hour in the theatre. <laughs> uh, that was Declan Donoghue there, the director of The Accused. And up next, I am joined by Marie and Claire from Ashing Festival, who are here to tell me about Ashing Festival, which is kick-starting this Sunday. Well, thanks very much. Hi, Rachel. How are you? It's, Hi, Rachel. it's in a few days now. You must be all excited or nervous. Or <laughs> where are you? We're super excited. Yeah. Uh, really looking forward to it. And we think it's all organised so and ready to go. So Great. we just uh, need the people of Longford, the children of Longford, to come out and support it. For people who might live in a bubble and not know what Ashling Children's Arts Festival, what is it? Well, it's a festival that started about 19 years ago in Longford. And it runs for the entire week. Um, it kicks off with an open day in St. Michael's, so that's a family free day, um, which has workshops, 
uh, we normally have an entertainer, so this year we have Billy Bubbles. Um, there's carnival games, there's a poliscope, there's a climbing wall, so face painting, lots of things for young kids to get involved in. And then throughout the week then we have theatre um, theater shows up and backstage. Then we have projects that have been running throughout the year. Um, that for example, this year we have a photo exhibition, so that's happening on Monday night. Um, what else do we have, Marie? Um, we have uh, another workshop that uh, St. Michael's are doing this year with mm -hmm. Angela Reynolds and they're all the kids are learning old songs, oh. um, old popular songs. So they go into St. Joseph's Care Centre then and sing to the clients of the daycare centre. So that's lovely. It's, I was at it myself last year and it was really, really nice, lovely. Uh, it's a lovely, worthwhile project. And I know they do stuff. There's going to be something here in Outtake Media and in the Longford Leader um, workshops kind of all over the county and a lot of people getting involved. So it really makes a, like a wonderful community festival that it's not just in one place or about mm -hmm. one thing it incorporates so much yeah i mean this year now the photography exhibition uh we've got two rural schools um participating in it so it's not just town based it's throughout the county and we have workshops that run in granard and loose nagrena and in cologne drumnish and newtown forbes as well as uh, full day workshops in uh, the Temperance Hall in Longford on the 29th of, of October. Brilliant. And how important is it um, to have a festival such as this for the children of Longford? I think it's very important. Um, the, the aim of Ashling has always been to bring the arts to as many young people as possible uh, in the Longford community. And I suppose um, for a lot of young people, you know, Ashling is their first taste of the arts. And even this week, we've met so many people who have said to us, um, I can remember that when I was a child, or I did my first workshop, or, you know, so it's great to hear that. So I think it is very important that children are exposed to the arts. And the Arts Council have just come out recently um, telling us the positive effects that arts have on young children, so. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I remember when I was younger um, doing puppet making in the Box Edge Theatre, and I still remember my puppet, met him out of a, a feather duster and he had purple hair and, <laughs> and a big orange nose but for me to remember something like that it obviously had a serious impact mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think there's you know puppets and socks and <laughs> witches and houses all over <laughs> longford that have been met at, um, at the ashling festival so it's quite a unique festival do they have it in other counties or i know there wouldn't be an ashling but something similar in other counties or is it very exclusive to here um, there aren't actually that many children's festivals around the country. There's a few. There's one in Galway. Um, Limerick. Has Limerick, one. yeah. Um, Cork. They're the big yeah. cities, yeah. you know. To have something in such a small county like this is really fantastic. For, an, for it to be going for 19 years is quite incredible. Um, I think that's probably just that the festival has been organised by um, a, a voluntary committee and the membership of the committee doesn't stay the same, um, but there seems to be a core, um, even though it does turn over over the years, but uh, people put in a tremendous amount of time and effort into it to make it successful. It does take a big amount of organisation. How long have you both been involved? Uh, we both joined four years, four years ago. ago. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we're still here and still <laughs> enjoying it. <laughs> It hasn't worn you out yet. No, we haven't burnt out yet. Because no. um, I don't want to focus on the negative. I know we said a lot, or it's been everywhere about uh, not receiving funding this year. But yeah. I know we had the children interviewing the organisers of Ashing Arts Festival here in Outtake Community Media. Yeah. And they had a few things to say. Country. Yeah. So how long have you been with Ashling? I'm four years with Ashling now, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, the festival takes place for a week in October every year, but preparation for the festival takes up the rest of the year. And uh, from early summer onwards, it's full steam ahead to get everything running and everything in place. Um, we run a theatre programme. We run workshops throughout the countryside um, at various locations during the week of the festival. This year, it's from the 23rd to the 29th of October. So, so I really don't want to focus on the negative, but some positive things which have, has come out uh, is people donating to the festival and realising, you know, we can't lose this. And they have been very generous. Um, was it the people at the indoor market gave a really generous donation? They were extremely generous, yes. Yeah, Kathleen Smith um, gave a huge donation, which made all the difference to us this year. So that was great to get it. and. Uh, the whole community seems to have rallied behind the festival and uh, nobody wants to lose it. No, 
because it's too easy to kind of take it for granted and say, oh, Ashling, that's on again, and forget that you know, it needs funds to run. So hopefully it'll be continuous. Well, hopefully there'll be more funding next year, but hopefully it'll be continuous that the businesses get behind it and realise how beneficial it is, because it'd be such a terrible thing to lose. Well, I think especially for next year, it'll be our 20th anniversary, yeah. and obviously we'd like to do something bigger and better, you know, than previous years. Um, so, you know, hopefully our, our, spo our sponsors, again, will be as supportive as they've been in previous years. But really, they've been so generous, and it's really thanks to the local community that keeps Ashling going every year. And what about having an Ashling Festival for adults? Because this lineup, I'm quite jealous that I'm not 12 anymore. <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, I'm looking at, the, actually, the Secret Life of Suitcases in the Backstage Theatre looks like a really, really good show. And yeah, we've got two performances of that, and uh, it's not exclusively for children, so we are delighted just, to have you I'm at it, Rachel. I'm yeah, to see you I'm there. <laughs> yeah. And the Friday night show is a lovely night for a family to come to. This year we've got Graffiti Classics. Brilliant. So they'd be quite well known, and you know, usually lots of families come to the Friday night. Um, we also have Fidget Feet on the Thursday, two performances, and... Um, They'd be very well known to people. They were involved in the big centenary, 1916-2016 uh, 2016 concert yeah. this year. Um, they're a fantastic aerial circus troupe. So that's really one worth going to see as well. Great. So what would you say to encourage people to get up and get out and get involved in Ashing Festival this week? Um, I would say to all the people um, of Longford to just come out and enjoy it because we enjoy organising it and we want the children of Longford to actually enjoy taking part in, in the festival and having a heap of fun. And as you've said yourself, it's a memorable experience. It's something that they'll carry with them for the rest of their lives, you know. And maybe one day they'll get involved in the organisation too. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> so it's kicking Always off on <laughs> Sunday at, in the St Michael's Boys School at what time? Two o'clock. Two, two, two to five. And if people want to find out more information? They can look at our Facebook page. We also have a website and we're on Twitter. So just uh, Google Ashling Festival and you'll find us. Excellent. Thanks so much. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you. Too. That's it. That's all for this week. Do, do head along to Backstage Theatre tomorrow for the accused and as well to St. Michael's Boys School on a Sunday to get involved in the Family Fun Day and check out Ashling Festival. .ie, I think it is, it is. Yep. the Ashing Festival website uh, for a full range of events that's going on all throughout next week. Join us again next week on Outtake Community Media YouTube channel and Cablecom Channel 9.
Many children's festivals around the country. There's a few. There's one in Galway. Um, Limerick has Limerick, one. yeah. Um, Cork. Skidder the big yeah, cities. Yeah. You know, to have something in such a small county like this is really fantastic. For it, for it to be going for 19 years is quite incredible. Um, I think that's probably just that the festival ha has been organised by um, a, c a voluntary committee and the membership of the committee doesn't stay the same. Um, but there seems to be a core, um, even though it does turn over over the years, but uh, people put in a tremendous amount of time and effort into it to make it successful. It does take a big amount of organisation. How long have you both been involved? Uh, we both joined four years, four years ago. ago. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we're still here and still <laughs> enjoying it. <laughs> it hasn't worn you out yet. No, we haven't burned out yet. Because no. um, I don't want to focus on the negative. I know we said a lot, or it's been everywhere about the not receiving funding this year but yeah. I know we had the children interviewing the organisers of Ashing Arts Festival here in Outtape Community Media yeah. and they had a few things to say. Country. Yeah. So how long have you been with Ashling? I'm four years with Ashling now and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, the festival takes place for a week in October every year but preparation for the festival takes up the rest of the year and uh, from early summer onwards, it's full steam ahead to get everything running and everything in place. Um, we run a theatre program. We run workshops throughout the countryside um, at various locations during the week of the festival. This year, it's from the 23rd to the 29th of October. So, so I really don't want to focus on the negative, but some positive things which have, has come out uh, is people donating to the festival and realising you know, we can't lose this, and they have been very generous. Um, was it the people at the indoor market gave a really generous donation? Mm. Extremely generous, yes. Yeah, Kathleen Smith um, gave a huge donation, uh, which made all the difference to us this year. So that was great to get it, and uh, the whole community seems to have rallied behind the festival, and uh, nobody wants to lose it. No, because it's too easy to kind of take it for granted and say, oh, Ashling, that's on again, and forget that in, it needs funds to run, so hopefully it'll be continuous. Well, hopefully there'll be more funding next year, but hopefully it'll be continuous that the businesses get behind it and realise how beneficial it is, because it'd be such a terrible thing to lose. Well, I think especially for next year, it'll be our 20th anniversary, yeah. and obviously we'd like to do something bigger and better, you know, than previous years. Um, so, you know, hopefully our, our, sp our sponsors again will be as supportive as they've been in previous years, but really they've been so generous and it's really thanks to the local community that keeps Ashling going every year. And what about having an Ashling festival for adults? Because this lineup, I'm quite jealous that I'm not 12 anymore. <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, I'm we had nights for new members back in May of last year and the year previous, where we just put on vignettes, if you would, just short five, six, ten minute long pieces to not have pressure on people. 
and that worked wonderfully. It was a lovely, gentle ease into it for them. But we're always open and screaming for new people because, I mean, it's wonderful to have your, your old favourites on stage. And we all love seeing X, Y or Z on stage. But you can go, yeah, but is there no one else? I want to see someone new. Yeah. And the audience, the audience love seeing the faces they, they know and recognise. But they always like to see something new in it. You know, and that's, it's wonderful for us to have the option. Like when I was casting The Accused, for 15 parts, I, I think 22 or 24 people auditioned. You know, and a lot of them were either new or very little experience within the group. So it was great to be able to have the opportunity to bring in new people and have new people come knowing that they could yeah. walk, walk into roles. And it's wonderful then for people like myself who want to be involved but know they can't commit or maybe just don't feel ready to co go on stage, yeah. but they can still get involved in set design or costumes. Or I was just thrown into the lights for yeah. um, the last play. And um, yeah, it's just been and, it's and brilliant. And we dragged you out and on you the festival the circuit, circuit with us. Yeah. Yeah. We dragged you to North Leitrim <laughs> and South Roscommon. And I survived <laughs> yeah. and I'm still involved. Yeah. Um, so if people, uh, if they do want to join the group, would it be best to just contact the Facebook page? The Facebook page is always there. We have the Facebook and Twitter if you search for Backstage Theatre Group. But we also have the group telephone, which the, the chairman, Declan Neville, is currently manning. And that number is off the top of my head, 0860860772. Okay, cool. I hope. Uh, and more pressing then, if people want to go see the, ac uh, the Accused, it's on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And Saturday in Backstage Theatre at 8 p.m. The theatre box office, again, would be backstage.ie or 043 And tickets are also available from Farrell Coy in Longford Town. Brilliant. I believe so far there's a nice push on tickets. So I think people will need to pick up the phone or get their walking shoes on up the canal line to the theatre to pick <laughs> yeah. them up at the box office. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for joining me. Well, thank you, Rachel. And I'll <laughs> see you in an hour in the theatre. <laughs> Uh, that was Declan Donoghue there, the director of The Accused. And up next, I am joined by Marie and Claire from Ashing Festival, who are here to tell me about Ashing Festival, which is kick-starting this Sunday. So thanks very much. Hi, Rachel. How are you? It's, Hi, uh, it's in a few days now. You must be all excited or nervous. Or <laughs> where are you? First. So what would you say to encourage people to get up and get out and get involved in Ashing Festival this week? Um, I would say to all the people um, of Longford to just come out and enjoy it because we enjoy organising it and we want the children of Longford to actually enjoy taking part in, in the festival and having a heap of fun. And as you've said yourself, it's a memorable experience. It's something that they'll carry with them for the rest of their lives, you know. And maybe one day they'll get involved in the organisation too. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> so it's kicking Always. off on Sunday at, in the St Michael's Boys School at what time? Two o'clock. Two, Two to five. And if people want to find out more information? They can look at our Facebook page. We also have a website and we're on Twitter. So just uh, Google Ashling Festival and you'll find us. Excellent. Thanks so much. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you. That's, it. That's all for this week. Do, do head along to Backstage Theatre tomorrow for The Accused and as well to St. Michael's Boys School on Sunday to get involved in the Family Fun Day and check out Ashling Festival. .ie, I think it is, it is. Yep. the Ashing Festival website uh, for a full range of events that's going on all throughout next week. Join us again next week on Outtake Community Media YouTube channel and Cablecom Channel 9.
Yeah, just the internet and yeah. amazing <laughs> musicians from Denmark. <Yeah>. <laughs> That's all you need. Um, because as well, you are only 21, and yes. you've had yeah. three albums out already. Yeah. And your debut album came out when you were 15. It did, yeah. So when all the rest of us were like getting up to mischief and, you know, dealing with puberty, you were out being stupid <laughs> already. It's still here. We're still doing it. You're just dealing <laughs> with it through music. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 How did it yeah, feel? Yeah, just, yeah, like, <laughs> just yeah, whatever. It's yeah, really good. It just happens. You just you're just doing it, really. Just you're just, yeah. just did it. I am. Um, I grew up. My dad is um, a drama teacher, and he was involved in a Beatles play with a, with a, a Beatles tribute band. So I kind of, from about eight onwards, I knew all these musicians who were releasing albums themselves. And you started playing music at themselves. age eight, was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I started guitar at eight, and uh, so it always seemed very achievable to just do your Stupid. own thing and make it, make an album, and you kind of figure ah, out how yeah. you do it cheaply, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's that's why. Ah, know. yeah. Every fifteen-year-old just yeah. gets told by hot press that they're the best. <laughs> they do, what was it? The best young songwriter in Ireland at the minute. Yeah, yeah. At the minute. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I think of the year. Of the, year. Of the minute. Yeah. <laughs> right now. The one of the country's most promising songwriters. That was Jackie Hayden. Solo yeah. artist of the year 2010. Yeah. All, all the songs I was writing at then weren't that very good. So, like, well done there. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, well done. Cheers, Connie. I think I was writing one about school or something. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. I probably heard them. Yeah. We, were, we were in school together, us three, so I, we kind of heard all are like early awkward <laughs> songs and it's pretty fun yeah. it's, been a, it's been a fun time so how does it feel at age 15 to have the biggest music magazine in the country say the stuff about you it was cool i remember i used to because jackie hayden was really supportive of us and he'd always try and throw a mention in to the magazine whenever he could and um, so i would always buy hot press the day it came out uh, in the shop beside my school in the morning and I'd bring it in uh, before class and just sort of leave the page open where my name was. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, that's you, Darren. That's you. <laughs> just sneaky. <laughs> yeah, didn't work. No, didn't I was work. going to say, did it make like the most popular boy ever or no, did no. people give a shit? <laughs> no, like, yeah, just, you know, there was like my three friends <laughs> would be like, hey, that's cool. Hmm. And then the other 85 people in the year would be like, <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Six <laughs> years on, is it, has it improved? <laughs> Not really. No, no. I've no. got three friends. <laughs> <laughs> but it must be great now that you're, you have the band to tour with, you're not, um, not on doing it all on your own. Yeah, it's... Because every witness that comes in brings more evidence. You could be thinking for one moment that he's innocent, and then they'll bring a piece of evidence that say, no, that has to be him guilty. And then the next so witness would bring something else in and something else, and it kept turning. So it was a real, real page turner. And having the twist at the end and that little gimmick as such of getting the audience involved and having them part of the play well, was a real selling point for me. And I really enjoyed reading it, so hopefully the audience will enjoy I think the so, because even from sitting through readings of it myself, I'm actually delighted I haven't seen it. I haven't seen any of the rehearsals, only the original read-throughs. Um, I think I only saw one read through with the whole cast. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a good one. Well, given, given that you're doing the lights, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't see it, the audience yeah. won't see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, yeah, we'll turn them on anyway. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, who actually, are you, can you give it away or who's playing who? Uh, the, yeah, the cast, you won't give anything away. It's a wonderful cast. The cast of 15, okay. which is the largest cast I've dealt with in a play. And this is my first time directing a full-length play with the group. But we have, as they say, in no particular order, we've uh, the His Lordship, 
Justice Cartwright, the judge, is being played by the president of Backstage Theatre Group, Patrick McLaughlin, who'll be very well known around Longford, of course. The two QCs are Phil Cox and Roy Davis, and they'd have their legal assistants, who would be Rena Lynch and Amy Oates. So then you, the accused himself, playing Dr. Sherwood, is Tom Lyons. Local Guilty. <laughs> lo 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 local journalist. I'm sure he, he, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be writing his own court report on it for next week. Then we have the jury bailiff, who speaks directly to the audience from the start to let them know if anyone they go into it doesn't know that the jury are part of it. So the jury bailiff has lots of interaction with the audience, and that's Maureen Dunn. And you'll have the court usher, which is Mary McLaughlin. Then we will have the two guards, one keeping control on the court and one keeping control on the prisoner. We have Seamus McManus and we have Anthony Heavey. And then you'd have the various witnesses coming in and giving their testimony. You'd have Frank Horn, uh, Jim Davey, Maggie McKenna, and Bernadette McGarvey, who's driving all the way from Carrick and Shannon for us. Wow. And then uh, someone's going to kill me. <laughs> I, think I, I think I only said 14 names. Uh, and someone very special we won't give and away. And someone very special, the, 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 the surprise guest. There's in 14 or 15 there. I don't know, I wasn't yeah. counting. Yeah. I was just thinking, that's a massive cast. And, sorry, the second witness in the box, the other Seamus, Seamus Morris. Okay. Who, it's his first time with us. What? Costumes are, I was just thrown into the lights for yeah. um, the last play. And, um, yeah, it's just been and, it's and, brilliant. And we dragged you out and on you the festival the circuit, circuit with us. Yeah. yeah. We dragged you to North Leitrim <laughs> and South Roscommon. And I survived. <laughs> yeah. And I'm still involved. Yeah. Um, so if people, uh, if they do want to join the group, would it be best to just contact the Facebook page? The Facebook page is always there. We have the Facebook and Twitter if you search for Backstage Theatre Group. But we also have the group telephone, which the, the chairman, Declan Neville, is currently banning. And that number is off the top of my head. 0860860772. Okay, cool. I hope. Uh, and more pressing then, if people want to go see the accu the accused, it's on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And Saturday in Backstage Theatre at 8 p.m. The theatre box office again would be backstage.ie or 043 3347 888, and tickets are also available from Farrakoy in Longford Town. Brilliant. I believe so far there's a nice push on tickets, so I think people will need to pick up the phone or get their walking shoes on up the canal line to the theatre to pick <laughs> yeah. them up at the box office. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for joining me. Well, thank you, Rachel. And I'll <laughs> see you in an hour in the theatre. <laughs> uh, that was Declan Donoghue there, the director of The Accused. And up next, I am joined by Marie and Claire from Ashing Festival, who are here to tell me about Ashing Festival, which is kick-starting this Sunday. So thanks very much. Hi Rachel, how are you? It's, Hi, uh, it's in a few days now, you must be all excited or nervous. Or <laughs> where are you? We're super excited, yeah. uh, really looking forward to it and we think it's all organised so and ready to go. So Great. we just uh, need the people of Longford, the children of Longford to come out and support it. For people who might live in a bubble and not know what Ashling Children's Arts Festival, what is it? Well it's a festival that started about 19 years ago in Longford and it runs for the entire week. Um, it kicks off with an open day in St. Michael's, so that's a family free day, um, which has workshops. Uh, we normally have an entertainer, so this year we have Billy Buggles. Um, there's carnival games, there's a poliscope, there's a climbing wall, so face painting, lots of things for young kids to get involved in. And then throughout the week then we have theatre um, theater shows up and backstage. Then we have projects that have been running throughout the year. Um, that for example, this year we have a photo exhibition, so that's happening on Monday night. Um, what else do we have, Marie? Um, we have uh, another workshop that uh, St. Michael's are doing this year with mm. Angela Reynolds, and they're, all the kids are learning old songs, mm. um, old popular songs. So they go into St. Joseph's Care Centre then and sing to the clients of the daycare centre. So that's lovely. It's, I was at it myself last year, and it was really, really nice, lovely. Uh, it's a lovely, worthwhile project. All the kids are learning old songs, mm. um, old popular songs. So they go into St. Joseph's Care Centre then and sing to the clients of the daycare centre. So that's lovely. It's, I was at it myself last year and it was really, really nice, lovely. Uh, it's a lovely, worthwhile project. And I know they do stuff. There's going to be something here in Outtake Media and in the Longford Leader. Um, 
workshops kind of all over the county and a lot of people getting involved. So it really makes a, like a wonderful community festival that it's not just in one place or about mm -hmm. one thing. It incorporates so much. Yeah, I mean, this year now, the photography exhibition, uh, we've got two rural schools um, participating in it. So it's not just town based, it's throughout the county. And we have workshops that run in Granard and Luce Nagrena and in Cologne, Drumlish and Newtown Forbes, as well as uh, full day workshops in uh, the Temperance Hall in Longford on the 29th of, September, of October. Brilliant. How important is it um, to have a festival such as this for the children of Longford? I think it's very important. Um, the, the aim of Ashling has always been to bring the arts to as many young people as possible uh, in the Longford community. And I suppose um, for a lot of young people, you know, Ashling is their first taste of the arts. And even this week, we've met so many people who have said to us, um, I can remember that when I was a child, or I did my first workshop, or, you know, so it's great to hear that. So I think it is very important that children are exposed to the arts. And the Arts Council have just come out recently um, telling us the positive effects that, that arts have on young children. So, yeah, fab. Yeah, I, I remember when I was younger and doing puppet making in the Box Edge Theatre, and I still remember my puppet, met him out of a a yeah, feather duster and he had purple hair and, <laughs> and a big orange nose. But for me to remember something like that, it obviously had a serious impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's, you know, puppets and socks and <laughs> witches and houses all over <laughs> Longford that have been met at, um, at the Ashling Festival. So. It's quite a unique festival. Do they have it in other counties? Or I know there wouldn't be an Ashling, but something similar in other counties, or is it very exclusive to hear? Um, there aren't actually that many children's festivals around the country. There's a few. There's one in Galway. Um, Limerick. Has Limerick, one. yeah. Um, Cork. Those are the big yeah. cities, yeah. you know, to have something in such a small county like this is really fantastic. For, an, for it to be going for 19 years is quite incredible. Um, I think that's probably just that the festival ha has been organised by um, a, c a voluntary committee and the membership of the committee doesn't stay the same, um, but there seems to be a core, um, even though it does turn over over the years, but uh, people put in a tremendous amount of time and effort into it to make it successful. It does take a big amount of organisation. How long have you both been involved? Uh, we both joined four years, four years ago. ago. <laughs> so, yeah. So we're it's a weekly television show in Longford promoting current affairs and events in Longford and also up and coming musicians. On this week's show, I am joined by organizers of the Ashing Festival, Claire Masco and Marie Fennessy. Also the director of this week's uh, Backstage Theatre group production play, The Accused. I am joined by director Declan Donoghue. But first up, they've traveled all the way down from Dublin to be with us today, the new 52. Hi. Woo. How are you? How Hello. Are you? Cheers. Thanks million for coming down. No problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, 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 just got here. Just got here. Yeah. And so the album um, Let Me Sleep came out almost a month ago. Yeah. How's everything been going? It's been great. Yeah, it's been very busy. We've been kind of up and down the country a lot, doing, doing a lot of radio and a couple of gigs. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been really good, yeah. Because you had two launches. One was in The Workman's and one was in The Roisin Dove. That must have been pretty crazy. Yeah, The Workman's was insane. Yeah, that was yeah, a great was gig. Great uh, and then... Um, Russian Dove was great as well. We had these two are in a band called Submotion who played with us as well. So they were they did about two hours overall. Yeah, it's it's pretty, pretty. That's a pretty long gig, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of rock. <laughs> a lot of rock. That's good though. Yeah. It's good that it shows real character of rock and roll that mm. you can keep it going with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Best thing. I'm yeah. not finished. I'm yeah. done. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, because you were on your you were solo up until. Six months ago, before you all started touring together. Yeah, I um, I had two albums out before under my own name, and I was making this album. It was supposed to be a solo album, but our producer suggested um, it might work out better to call the band name because it sounded so much like a band. Yeah. Um, so then I brought the guys in. I've known them all for for years, and uh, yeah. We've been together ever since. Yeah. It sounds like a band because you played every instrument on the album yourself, didn't you? Pretty much. Um, the, our producer, Boo, he did some, some backing vocals. And then our engineer, Chris, he did some keyboards and uh, percussion. And we have a guy called Gustav from Denmark who uh, he's a friend of the producer, Boo. And you just send him songs and say, I want 
any instrument, he'll just he'll do it for you. He's amazing. Cool. So we were like, we want pedal steel here, violin here, saxophone here, whatever, and then that's simple. Like two hours later, you get all the files back, and it's amazing. Modern mm. technology. Hey, we yeah. don't need band members. We've got the internet. Yeah, just the internet <laughs> and yeah. <an> amazing <laughs> musician from Denmark. <Yeah. laughs> that's all you need. Um, because as well, you are only 21, and yes, you've had yeah. three albums out already. Yeah. And your debut album came out when you were 15. It did, yeah. So when all the rest of us were like getting up to mischief and you know dealing with puberty, you were out being a superstar <laughs> already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 we're still doing it. You're just dealing with it. He want any instrument, he'll just he'll do it for you. He's amazing. Cool. So we were like, we want pedal steel here, violin here, saxophone here, whatever. And then that's simple. like two hours later, you get all the files back and it's amazing. Modern mm. technology. Hey, we yeah. don't need band members. We've got the internet. Yeah, just the internet <laughs> and yeah. an amazing <laughs> musician from Denmark. <Yeah. laughs> that's all you need. Um, because as well, you are only 21 and yes. you've had yeah. three albums out already. Yeah. And your debut album came out when you were 15. It did, yeah. So when all the rest of us were like getting up to mischief and, you know, dealing with puberty, you were out being a superstar <laughs> already. <laughs> we're still doing it. We're still doing it. You're just dealing with it through music. Yeah. How did it feel? Yeah, just, uh, like, uh, <laughs> just, yeah, whatever. That's really good. It just happened. You're just, you're just doing it, really. Just you're just doing it. Just yeah. did it. I am. Um, I grew up, my dad is um, a drama teacher, and he was involved in a Beatles play with a, with a, a Beatles tribute band. So I kind of, from about eight onwards, I knew all these musicians who were releasing albums themselves. And you started playing music at themselves. age eight, was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I started guitar at eight. And, uh, so it always seemed very achievable to just do your it's own thing and make, make an album, and you kind of figure ah, out how yeah. to do it cheaply. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's, that's why. Ah, yeah, every 15-year-old just yeah. gets told by Hot Press that they're the best, <laughs> they do, what was it, the best young songwriter in Ireland at the minute? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the minute. Ah, yeah. <laughs> of, I think of the year. <laughs> of the year. Of the minute. Yeah. <laughs> right now. The one of the country's most promising songwriters. That was Jackie Hayden. Solo yeah. artist of the year 2010. Yeah. All, all the songs I was writing at then weren't that very good, so, like, well done there. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, well done. Yeah. I was writing one about school or something. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. I probably heard them. Yeah. We were we were in school together, us three. So I we kind of heard all our like early awkward yeah. songs. And <laughs> it's pretty fun. Yeah. It's, been a, it's been a fun time. So how does it feel at age fifteen to have the biggest music magazine in the country say the stuff about you? It was cool. I remember I used to because Jackie Hayden was really supportive of us, and he'd always try and throw a mention in to the magazine whenever he could. Um, so I would always buy Hot Press the day it came out uh, in the shop beside my school in the morning and I'd bring it in uh, before class and just sort of leave the page open where my name was. <laughs> 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 like, hey, that's you, Dara. That's you. I just <laughs> sneaky. Just, uh, <laughs> didn't work. No, didn't I was going to say, did it make you like the most popular boy ever? Or no, did no. people give a shit? No, like, yeah, to just, you know, there was like my three friends would be like, hey, that's cool. Hmm. And then the other 85 people in the year would be like, shut up. Ben and Wade's wonderful cast, the cast of 15, okay. which is the largest cast I've dealt with in a play. And this is my first time directing a full length play with the group. But we have, as they say, in no particular order, we've had uh, the, his lordship, Justice Cartwright, the judge, is being played by the president of Backstage Theatre Group, Patrick McLaughlin who'd be very well known around Longford, of course. The two QCs are Phil Cox and Roy Davis, and they'd have their legal assistants, who would be Raina Lynch and Amy Oates. So then he, the accused himself, playing Dr. Sherwood, is Tom Lyons. Local Guilty. <laughs> lo 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 local journalist. I'm sure he, he, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be writing his own court report on it for next week. Then we have the jury bailiff, who speaks directly to the audience from the start to let them know if anyone they go into it doesn't know that the jury are part of it. So the jury bailiff has lots of interaction with the audience and that's Maureen Dunn and you'll have the court usher which is Mary McLaughlin. Then we will have the two guards, one keeping control on the court and one keeping control on the prisoner. We have Seamus McManus and we have Anthony Heavey and then you'll have the various witnesses 
coming in and giving their testimony, you'd have Frank Horn, uh, Jim Davey, Maggie McKenna, and Bernadette McGarvey, who's driving all the way from Carrick and Shannon for us. Oh. And then uh, someone's going to kill me. <laughs> I, think I, I think I only said 14 names. Uh, and someone very special we won't give and away. And someone very special, <laughs> the, 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 the surprise guest. There's in 14 or 15 there. I don't know, I wasn't yeah. counting. Yeah. I was just thinking that's a massive cast. And sorry, the second witness in the box. The other Seamus, Seamus Morris. Okay. He, it's his first time with us. Wow. So we're, we're very lucky. We've got a very mixed cast. The likes of Pacho and Phil and Moyne, who've been very experienced. cornerstones of Back to the Theatre Group for years. And we've Seamus, who has never been involved with us before. Seamus McManus has been in two or three productions. This is only we in his second production with us. So we've got a good broad spectrum of ages and yeah, experience. experience through the group. I know Mags as well, she only did a one act, so this will be her full first full length yeah, as well. Yeah, Mags' first time with the group is only back in May. For Perfidia. Doing Perfidia, which herself and Mary got to bring back for an encore performance in the Little Blue yeah, Room. Yeah, it's brilliant. And yeah. of course, that was directed by Pacho, so yes. it's good they have that relationship yeah. there already. And, uh, and it's, it's great having the likes of Pacho and Phil in the, can in the cast who have that experience and I can turn to them for guidance if I need mm. and having people like that that will bring their character to rehearsals nearly already formed so there's not as much pressure on them to do that during the rehearsals so they can use rehearsals for getting the, the movements. Or and they're, all the kids are learning old songs, mm. um, old popular songs. So they go into St. Joseph's Care Centre then and sing to the clients of the daycare centre. So that's lovely. It's, I was at it myself last year and it was really, really nice, lovely. Uh, it's a lovely, worthwhile project. And I know they do stuff. There's going to be something here in Outtake Media and in the Longford Leader. Um, workshops kind of all over the county and a lot of people getting involved so it really makes a, like a wonderful community festival that it's not just in one place or about mm -hmm. one thing it incorporates so much yeah i mean this year now the photography exhibition uh we've got two rural schools um participating in it so it's not just town based it's throughout the county and we have workshops that run in Granard and Lusnagrena and in Cologne, Drumlish and Newtown Forbes, as well as uh, full day workshops in uh, the Temperance Hall in Longford on the 29th of, September, of October. Brilliant. How important is it um, to have a festival such as this for the children of Longford? I think it's very important. Um, the, the aim of Ashling has always been to bring the arts to as many young people as possible uh, in the Longford community. And I suppose um, for a lot of young people, you know, Ashling is their first taste of the arts. And even this week, we've met so many people who have said to us, um, I can remember that when I was a child, or I did my first workshop, or, you know, so it's great to hear that. So I think it is very important that children are exposed to the arts. And the Arts Council have just come out recently um, telling us the positive effects that arts have on young children. So, yeah, fab. Yeah, I, I remember when I was younger and doing puppet making in the Box Edge Theatre and I still remember my puppet met him out of a, a feather duster and he had purple hair and, <laughs> and a big orange nose but for me to remember something like that it obviously had a serious impact mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think there's you know puppets and socks and <laughs> witches and houses all over Longford <laughs> that have been met at, um, at the Ashling Festival so it's quite a unique festival do they have it in other counties or I know there wouldn't be an Ashling but something similar in other counties or is it very exclusive to hear um, there aren't actually that many children's festivals around the country. There's a few. There's one in Galway. Um, Limerick. Has Limerick, one. yeah. Um, Cork. Well, they're the big yeah. cities, yeah. you mm -hmm. know. To have something in such a small county like this is really fantastic. For, an, for it to be going for 19 years is quite incredible. Um, I think that's probably just that the festival ha has been organised by um, a, c a voluntary committee and the membership of the committee doesn't stay the same. Um, but there seems to be a core, um, even though it does turn over over the years, but uh, people put in a tremendous amount of time and effort into it to make it successful. It does take a big amount of organisation. How long have you both been involved? Uh, we both joined four years, four years ago. ago. Mm -hmm. So, 